what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology and today i have to wish everybody a very very happy new year 2018 i don't know till the time i upload this video will it be 2017 or 18 nonetheless my best wishes to everybody i wish i hope and i pray that everybody stays happy and we learn the karma associated with our chart which is ourselves all right happy new year good luck wish you all the best bye bye see you soon <laughs> oh my god no 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 we'll see each other very soon every day no worries so what's the topic of today today's topic is one of the fundamental topics which people do not understand completely they understand it but they just understand the word they don't completely understand meaning of this terminology and what is that yes you have seen it in in the title you're right the name of this word is ascendant oh ascendant is my first house i know i'm leo ascendant no it's not like that it doesn't work that way all right so we will see how it works and if you are new to the channel and you have still not subscribed in this entire 2017 then oh my god at least before 2018 comes you must subscribe right and if you want a personal consultation then please approach me in my website vedic renaissance and book accordingly and yes if you have any questions queries or comments or if you want me to make any other video or on anything else like some of you have suggested me to make a video on second marriage third marriage that is there on the list it is coming just hang on so please let me know in the comment section okay because i respond to every comment almost <laughs> all right so what is today's topic oh yes and before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will also be there with you in 2018 okay now what is ascendant we all know what ascendant is right it is known as lagana which means when sun is transiting when sun is moving the particular zodiac sign that is rising from the east that is the ascendant see the sun is always moving but what defines you or me or somebody else that is the lagna so the sun is moving sun is moving like this and this is the ascendant the ascendant is also moving like this somebody is born bang up that is he or she so that shows who you are all right by that i don't mean that that sign i mean to say that that particular time frame shows the entire game of the planets during that time that is what you are internally externally so that is what will define all the life events of your life okay so that is very important but what people don't understand is it is not so simple they say that okay he is a gemini ascendant so he is very talkative that is true but that is not how you study an ascendant how you should study an ascendant is there are different factors that we have to consider first of all we have to consider of course the the sign which is rising yes so for example if you are a sagittarius rising that means the sign number 9 will be in your first house that means the traits related to sagittarius i'm not talking of jupiter here i mean of course jupiter and sag is the same thing but i am not talking of pisces or jupiter here because jupiter rules sag and pisces both but when i am saying you are a sagittarius rising it means the traits of sagittarius will be the ones which you have to carry it in your head because lagna is the head it's the first house similarly if you are a virgo ascendant then the traits of virgo will be the most important for you in this lifetime is it understood that means your life even if there is no planet sitting in the ascendant let's consider that the first house is empty even then 
you will realize eventually suppose you are a virgo ascendant you will eventually realize in life especially after the planets mature 30 32 36 roughly after 36 that you will always need to behave like a Virgo in almost every situation. Almost every situation doesn't mean that every situation, okay, today I'm going to this place, then also I have to behave like a Virgo. Tomorrow I'm going there, then also. No, it's not like that. But you will realize that the more you behave like a Virgo, to that degree, your life and your energy will be in tune with each other. And to the degree you behave away from it, which is Pisces, to that degree will be in trouble trouble means what is Pisces Pisces says don't just worry too much just leave everything whatever has to happen will happen if you behave like that then you will be in serious trouble okay so that is what it means first then you have to see the planet which is ruling the ascendant so if you are a Virgo ascendant then Mercury is the ruler. Some also give Rahu as the co-rulership, as the co-ruler of Virgo. But here I am talking of simple astrology. I am saying for the time being, take Mercury. That means the traits of Mercury has to be used irrespective of whichever house you are talking about. Either it is the first house, second house, third house, fourth house, it doesn't matter. You will always have to use your thinking, reasoning, logical power because that's what Mercury is. You have to look to the details because that is the sign of Virgo. Otherwise, you will be in trouble in life. At least if you are behaving like the sign in the seventh house, which is directly opposite of that sign for Virgo, which is Pisces, then you will be in serious trouble because that kills the Lagna. Yes, seventh house is the house of enemies. It's the house where the sun sets, which means you are dying. So there, if you behave like the sign which is in your seventh house, then you will feel as if you are dying because the sun is setting there. Do you understand? Now, that is not all. The other thing you have to understand is the planet which is ruling, where that is sitting. You have to see how that planet is placed. So let me give you an example. Suppose you are a Libra ascendant. Then Venus becomes the ruler of Libra, right? So now suppose Venus is placed in the 10th house. Okay. In the sign of Cancer. Because for Libra, Cancer is in the 10th house. What do you mean by this? It means that your life will always demand you to work and prove yourself 10th house is the place where the sun is at the highest peak at the strongest position which means the sun is most visible it's the afternoon time that means to the degree you behave like that to that degree you will find fulfillment in life and to the degree you behave away from that which is what fourth house to that degree you will suffer Yes. Now, another thing has to be seen. What is the sign here? Sign is Cancer. Yes, because Venus is in the 10th house for Libra ascendant. Example, it is in the sign of Cancer. That means you have to find emotional fulfillment, contentment in the workplace. So, for these people, it's highly recommended that you choose some profession which you like to do. Otherwise, trust me, you will leave it. And to that degree, to, to that degree which you are choosing that, to that degree you will be happy. Otherwise, you may feel that, oh, life is simply a burden because Ascendant Lord shows the life. Apart from that, the next thing that you have to see is, which zodiac signs are falling in the houses? Should I repeat? For Libra, for example, Scorpio is the 8th house. Sagittarius is the ninth house. Aries becomes the seventh house. That means whichever sign is there in whichever house, to open that house, you have to use the traits of that zodiac sign. For example, if a Libra ascendant 
has any planet in cancer or irrespective of having or not having any planet suppose that 10th house cancer is empty for libra ascendant even then they should only choose careers which is related to the moon by career i don't mean work but that is more of 6th house but 10th house is the primary karma with which you are involved in for most of the people that's career that's work that's job for most of the people so they must choose professions which are related to the moon now what is moon moon is water emotions they can be very uh, good as psychiatrists or psychologists or they can be very good as social workers they can be very good as politicians why because moon is also the public yes or they can be good at anything which deals with their mind so suppose for this person the moon is sitting in the 8th house in the sign of taurus so these people will do excellent in matters of career if they go to hidden sources because the 10th lord is in the 8th house so this is how you study you understand you don't have to only see the sign you have to also see where the lords are placed by that you will get a clue of what the person can be doing pertaining to that house all right and then you also have to see where is the lagna lord getting exalted and where is it getting debilitated that is very important for every ascendant that will tell you which places you will be very good at or rather if you twist it which places you should go and which places you should avoid take the example of libra ascendant where does venus gets exalted venus gets exalted in the sign of pisces for libra pisces is the 6th house yes that means libra people whenever it comes to the 6th house those are the things they should be looking to do what is 6th house 6th house is the house of celibacy 6th house is the house of disputes sixth house is the house of quarrel sixth house is the house of daily work daily routine so when they keep doing that then the lagna feels very balanced and i'm not talking of that libra trait of being balanced i'm not talking of that it it's true for any zodiac sign and on the other hand 12th house is the sign of virgo where venus gets debilitated so those are the areas where the libra ascendants have to be careful in matters of the 12th house now take example of leo leo is ruled by which planet the sun now sun gets exalted in aries for leo aries will fall in the 9th house yes that means leo ascendants must practice some spiritual path otherwise their life will become hellish do you understand why because the lagna lord is telling oh i will be best situated there and if you take it opposite to that which is the third house which is libra which is what Lib third house is basically what it's the house where you just meet people and discuss superficial things which has actually nothing to do with your life third house is basically what going to pub short encounters meeting people oh yeah i like you you are a nice person you are handsome you are like this you are like that superficial talks basically that is the third house so if a leo ascendant behaves like that that person will be in serious trouble or if that person does not take to spiritual practice because third house is the house of rambo as they say because it is the house of courage and when you have too much courage you say i don't care god exists or not i'll do whatever i want so that house is there but if leo's behave like that then there will be a predicament for these people to the degree they are connected to the ninth house of spirituality to that degree they will be happy and to the degree they are away from the ninth house which is the third house to that degree they will be miserable depending on other combinations of the chart of course and now somebody will post some charts i know oh 
this person has this planet here there what you are saying is not correct for god's sake please don't misunderstand me when i say all these things i always say that see the whole chart first then you go to the individual placement just because somebody is having one planet placed there and you say that oh you said that will be good but it's turning bad doesn't make any sense right you have to see the all the nine planets but here i am giving a individual outlook on ascendance otherwise people just keep telling me oh i am a leo ascendant now why this is not happening to me it doesn't work that way you have to know what is the meaning of the word leo ascendant leo ascendant means the sign aries is in a particular house yes sagittarius is falling in a particular house and they have to impart spiritual knowledge to their children also because fifth house is the house of children and nine sagittarius represents spiritual knowledge so if the leos do not impart spiritual knowledge to their children then their life will be in trouble trouble doesn't mean they will not have children when i say trouble people will interpret it in some different way. I, i i didn't mean that or i also don't mean that they they will have problems with their children but what i am saying is if they do that with their children then their lives will be much more happier much more fulfilled and take the any other example which ascendant should i take okay let's take the example of cancer ascendants cancer ascendant so now we will say okay cancer is this cancer is that that's fine now you go to the second house of cancer second house is which sign it is the sign of leo so whenever cancer ascendants take any resolution through their mouth they must stick to it because leo is a fixed sign and it's the sign of royalty the king who who is not challenged by anybody so if you frequently keep changing your beliefs your thought systems your value systems you will be the most miserable person cancer ascendant otherwise you will be very happy if you stay fixed on your ideals second house is the house of ideals yes i am got married to this person i will stick to him or her irrespective of things i am just giving an example that doesn't mean that if the other person is beating you you should still stay with that person i am not saying that okay so this is how you study the ascendant all right so when people tell that oh i am virgo ascendant na that is happening here this is happening there i'm like just because you are a virgo in the first house doesn't mean your 10th house is also virgo right 10th <laughs> house has a different zodiac sign altogether so the 10th house will not function like that but why i am saying lagna is very important because that is the whole house lagna is the summation of all the 12 houses i mean the other 11 houses so irrespective of <coughs> any zodiac sign placed in any house for any ascendant the traits of the sign in the first house the lagna becomes very important okay so <coughs> that is how you study see where the lagnesh gets exalted see where the lagnesh gets debilitated yes of course i'll be starting this series on ascendants individually how every ascendant behaves what they are good at what they are not very good at yes okay that is it from my side this is what i wanted to say regarding understanding the 12 ascendants how to study an ascendant okay that's what i would name this video as maybe let's see what i name it <laughs> till the end okay that is it from my side if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it somewhere here there and if you want a personal consultation then please approach me in my website and if you have any questions queries or comments regarding this video oh my god the lamp is burning i have to go <laughs> then please let me know in the comments all right what's that's all happy new year 2018 bye bye see you